With us now, Roger Casal is a former member of the UK's parliament for the opposition Labour Party. He joins us live from the Polish capital, Warsaw, right now. Roger, good to see you. Good morning. You know, when we heard this plan of, you know, you try to get in this way, you'll be banned for life. That's pretty extreme. But you could say that that might just serve as an effective deterrent. Uh, it's extreme rhetoric, but it's not aimed at migrants. It's aimed at the political constituency uh, of the Conservative Party in the in the UK, primarily. Uh, Rishi Shunak is c c concerned to show that he can take a hard line on this. Having yeah. said that, this is a serious problem, but it can't be solved by legislation. And people who take the desperate measures of trying to cross the busiest sea route in the world in a dinghy are not going to be put off by rhetoric. Yeah, that's a, that's a point to make for sure. So how does this stack up with UK's law on allowing people who come in to have due process, similar to what, what they do in the United States. But it seems like there's always a loophole to remove due process when the political winds feel like that's necessary. Well, it's not just UK law. It's the 1951 refugee, UN Re Refugee Convention. Yeah. Uh, and it's also required by the UK's uh, one of the signatories. In fact, the UK was the author of the European Convention on Human Rights. And Britain has a, a long tradition of uh, offering safe sanctuary and refuge uh, and uh, respecting international law. And it's possible that the new legislation will bring the UK into conflict with international law and provoke um, a case in the European Court of Human Rights. Right. Uh, so I think this is very regrettable that the government is going this route. Having said that, there is a problem here that needs to be addressed. Nobody's pretending that this isn't a serious problem, but this isn't the solution. Yeah, and you mentioned that it's a serious problem. When you look at the numbers year to year of arrivals by this manner, by small boat, it is way, way up last year. If you don't think that this is the right way to do it and that it's not feasible legislatively or legally, what is the right way to tackle this? Well, I don't have all, all the answers, but I think there needs to be a public debate about that. And I think the focus needs to be on what we want to achieve, as your previous speaker said. And I think that uh, what we need to achieve is a situation where we have safe and legal routes. Uh, most of the people arriving in dinghies are, in fact, eligible for asylum. They come from places like Afghanistan, Iran and Syria, and but most of their asylum claims, once they arrive in the UK, are upheld. It's just regrettable that they have to be in the hands of people smugglers and have to go through these desperate measures and then get locked up when they get here with the threat of being sent back. We need to have more international collaboration. We need to have safe and legal routes. And yes, we do need to decide between those who do have uh, genuine genuine claims to asylum and those who don't. But most of those arrived in the dinghies do. Yeah. So do you think there is no way that this is going to pass? And if not, how does that make the prime minister look? Because sure, he proposed it. But if it's you know viewed as not feasible from the start, what's the point, really? Well, the uh, legislation will take time to come into effect. It's going to be a, a retrospective legislation. So as soon as the Home Secretary makes the announcement today, uh, the, that's the date from which the, the new legislation will apply. But it will take a long time to get it onto the statute book and to put the mechanisms in place. And by that time, there'll probably be an election. So I, I think this um. is... Uh, really um, not something that is going to be enforced before the next election. We'll have to see what the Labour position is on this. Uh, I don't think the Labour Party would want to uh, adopt this kind of legislation. In, time, so they're, they're, uh, in fact, they're highly critical of it. And they certainly wouldn't want to bring themselves into a conflict with international law. But having said that, they will need to find uh, some measures, some policy measures. We'll need to have a policy to respond to this, not just criticise the government. Yeah. All right, Roger. Good to talk to you. Thank you.